Hey guys, uh, welcome to this tutorial on how to set up a virtual reality headset with only your phone and two pieces of software called Trinus VR and FaceTrack No IR. It's a relatively cheap setup and I'll run through all the settings with you, how to set it up, how to connect both programs and how to get the most out of your um, system. So the only thing you'll really need also is a head mount which depending on how much you spend in terms of like the quality of what you're going to get. But other than that, let's go into the um, tutorial and I'll show you how to set everything up. The first thing you'll need in the setup is Trinus VR. Basically, it's a software that you install onto your desktop and your phone, which allows you to um, use head tracking directly from your phone and um, sends a screen over um, to your phone. So basically, it works similar to like an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive. Um, it uses sensors built in and it um, uses the phone screen so you can see the game. Also, you do need the phone app. So, if you're an iPhone user, you have a free app you can use, which um, you can then purchase like a full version in the um, within the app. And likewise, Android users, there's a light version of the app which gives you 50 minutes free taste sessions as many as you want. So, if, just before you buy like the full version, if you do get are interested in um, virtual reality for flight simulator and other games, because it's not just FSX it works in, they works in plenty of other games. It's um, definitely worth looking into. And likewise, if you're going to get the full app, it costs seven pound forty nine, and it works there um, with plenty of other games, depending on um, other systems you got, which I'll go on to later in the review. Second thing we'll need is Face Track No IR, which is basically and what we're going to use to send over the um, Trinus data to FSX as Trinus VR doesn't connect to FSX directly but using FaceTrack No IR it allows you to um, port the data over so it's another cheap app which you can look into um, you don't need it for like, other games which is basically just FSX and a few others that you could use it for and it's um, fairly cheap only like two pounds I believe it was two three pounds and another thing you can definitely look into Alright then, let's go on to the uh, main setup of how to get these two working. The first thing you want to do is open up China's VR server, which is basically the main app you'll be using to connect to your um, phone. So, here's my settings, that's what I'll go through. So, head mount, basically go for like custom, any, you don't know, don't know like what kind of phone resolution you have got, so forth. So if you have any of these, then do pick one, but custom any will do you fine. Image scales like the quality of the video get back onto your um, phone. So if you want like a high quality image, go for like ultra. I'm quite happy with low because I don't have like the most pixels on my phone. Um, then you go on to like compression. That's just like again image size. Caption mode. Go for compatible. If you're using it for FSX and some other games, definitely compatible is the best you want. Um, then sensor mode. Because I'll be using face track no IR. You want to send it through face track no IR, but most games also work with like free track as well. Likewise, track IR sometimes works. There's also Steam VR mode, which is also in the works. Then you've got rotation sensitivity. That's how um, when you move your phone, like the gyroscope as well, how it um, works. Network, that's just your ports and stuff. Um, video, you've got these in like fake 3D. Have that enabled, it's definitely useful. Don't want to capture cuts. Uh, don't want, uh, you want a motion boost. Um, max frames, 60, 70 will be about fine, but some people are at 30. DPI fix, definitely useful, and Q frames, that just like stutters and doesn't look great at all. Um, sensors, depending on your phone, um, depends what your sensor will be. In my case, OnePlus X really sensitive, so I've turned it all down, like proper, it's horrible. Prediction is also going down as well, although sometimes it's good to have it a bit higher. Um, home, I use as like a reset key, so if you're looking like to left and right a lot and there's, there's off sensor, I press the home key on the keyboard and that resets it. And the position track is just for something like if you're using a webcam or something. So, um, yeah. What you then do is you go to the phone app. Gives you a safety warning. And then you basically um, load it up and you get a little, like, go option, I guess. The screen goes um, purple and then it says bottom says phone detected and my IP address, which is censored. So then on the app, what you do is you press start and then basically you go now streaming if i go to sensors or one of these screens there you go it says top so it says at the top here rate capture rate delivery and if i move my phone around the numbers should change bearing in mind where the phone's position is and stuff so um yeah it's a bit slow there but it only updates like once every second which fair enough um right so that's trying to set up let's go to face track no ir 
Right, setting up face track now is a little bit more complicated, but once you get through the um, basic events, then you should be fine. Whoops, just turned off my phone. Um, right, so yeah, basically, um, for profile, just leave it default. Then, when it comes to tracker source, go for face track no IR UDP. And if I show you why, basically, you got your tracker primary, receiving port number, and if I open try in this VR, you want it to meet the center port, so 5555 to 5556. Issue is, I believe Trinus, when you do send a port, it adds 1 to the um, port, so you want 5556. If I do start this one again, then hopefully, if I press start as well, in the settings, tracker will be active, and you can see the numbers change, I'm moving my phone around. Likewise, the head on the top left also rotates, bear in mind how I'm positioning my phone. Stop that for now. Um, so yeah, set that up, then you want filter. EM, EWMA I prefer myself, it allows you to like change the curve and stuff, but if you're more advanced in this kind of stuff, have a look at the Acela filter, which basically is like a graph which you can change, bearing in mind how sensitive you want your thing to be. Um, second track of source, don't really need it, but if you use um, something like Face API, I believe it will be. Yes, no. Um, there's one as well, which um, I don't really use, but... Um, basically, that's your to use any webcam, just track your face fit, and I guess it works. Um, you need a good webcam for fast refresh rate, however, that's something definite. Then, for game protocol, if you want FSX, just go for FSX Sim Connect, it's basically built in and works probably the best. And likewise, game protocol, look into free track, that's probably the most effective one in like terms of uh, getting into games. So, free track's the good one in the settings wise. Good start dummy track IR just in case the game's looking to track IR. It's enable both interfaces and locates the DLL and then yeah, you're set to go. If I press starts, have everything active. If I turn my phone like there and if I press home, it then recenters the camera so that the um, person's facing forward again. So yeah, I'm looking around, sometimes sensor's a bit messed up, plus I'm recording so it slows it down a bit, but if you press home, it should just recenter the camera. So um yeah, I'll now show you what it looks like inside the game. Um, another thing also um, worth doing is if you go to adjust lens, basically um, what it allows you to do is just mess around the phone settings and basically ensure that um, from when you're looking at your um, headset, whether you're using to look into the um, phone screens, adjust lenses, adjust the position of the screen and basically make it easier for your eyes. So I also work on that and you should make your time within the simulator a lot more um, I guess a lot better and less nauseous depending on like your issues. So for example, if you're wearing glasses, you probably want to change the warp a little bit in the position of the screen. If you don't, then you should be fine. But yeah, definitely look into those settings and then make the game like more suited for the viewer. Here we are inside the um, aircraft within FSX. It's the Vault 737, just because it's really easy to get to. But once you're in the simulator, basically everything's helped, no other option you need to press, and it all works pretty well. So, apologies, you can't see my phone screen, I don't have a my screen recorder on that, but basically it's pretty simple. Look right, you look right. Look left, you look left. Look up, you look, whoops, dropped my phone. <laughs> look up, you look up. Look down, you look down. Tilt your head left and right, you can look left and right. Tilting as well. Um, if you have a proper like good phone or if you use like the webcam, they can also move your head position left and right and like all over the place. But as a whole, it's really effective this and it's definitely something you can look into. Like I said, it's very inexpensive and it's really uh, useful tool to use with in Flight Simulator. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial video. Um, if you did, do leave a like down below and I'll probably do more for you in the future. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe the video if also you enjoyed it. So don't forget to um, share some social media, show people that you can use um, head tracking in FSX at a very cheap price without having to buy an Oculus Rift or a HTC Vive or anything. Because like I said, it's only like eight to nine quid in all you spent. Yeah, as a whole, it's definitely worth looking into if you've got a tight budget. So other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Do like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.